Hello, everybody. A very warm welcome to the GIZ webinar on the BUR Process Guidance Tool. My name is Rocio Lichter, and I'm the Coordinator for Implementation and Global Issues of the Information Matters Project, under which we are conducting this webinar. The Information Matters Project is one of the projects funded under the International Climate Initiative of the Federal Ministry of Environment, the BMUB. So, once again, I'm very happy to extend our welcome on behalf of the entire Information Matters team. We also have a number of distinguished speakers and experts who will, be pre who will present during this webinar. But before introducing them to you and outlining the agenda, we would like to first make some technical announcements so you know how we will communicate and interact during the webinar. I now hand over to my colleague, Verena Schaus. She's also a member of the Information Matters team, who will, you ex who will explain to you the technicalities. So, Verena, you have the floor now. Uh, thank you, Rocio. Just give me a second. Um, Okay, great. So, also a warm welcome from my side. Hello, everybody. Um, it is my pleasure to give you a quick introduction on the control panel of the webinar. The panel allows you to use several settings. First, you can hide the control panel, which you can see here on number one. Second, the inactivated microphone button here at number two shows that you have been muted by the organizers. You will not be able to unmute yourself. To communicate with us, you're very welcome to use the question window, which I will explain to you later. First, you can see the webinar on the full screen using the button next to number three. This is a useful tool to give you an even better look at the presentations we will show you soon. First, you can adjust the language of your panel using the globe, which you can find on the top right of the control panel. Now, coming back to the question window, where we warmly invite you to write down questions that arise throughout the sessions. You find it in the lower part of the control panel. Please type your questions in this window and click Send. We, the webinar hosts, will be the only one to see them. The questions will be answered in the Q&A session, so please submit them beforehand. Questions we will not be able to address during the Q&A session due to the limited time of our webinar will be answered after the webinar bilaterally. I will now hand over to Rocio to give you a short introduction to the BUR Process Guidance Tool. Okay, here we go. So now, after the technical instructions, I'm very happy to proceed with the agenda now. And um, I, I will now proceed explaining the agenda and the presentation of the speakers. Um, we will have about one hour for this, or let's say exactly one hour for this webinar, and we will proceed as follows. I will start myself to give you a brief overview about the tool and the context in which it was developed and why and for whom. We will then hear from our experts from Ricardo Energy and Environment, Ms. Jill Wilkins and Mr. John Watterson. Both of them have been part of the team that developed and designed the tool and were also part of the Information Matters team during the first phase when we developed the tool. They will be the ones that will walk you through the tool, showing its structure, its main principles and functionalities, and how and for what it can be used. After that, we will then get some first-hand information on the application of the tool, 
from the perspective of a country. And I am very pleased uh, that Ms. Maya Zahavratske from the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources Protection of Georgia will provide the perspective of her country. Then, after having heard all the presentations, we will have about 15 minutes for question and answers from the audience. So, as Verena explained, please feel free to already start sending any questions you may have during the presentations via the chat uh, function. And then we will take them up during the question and answer session. Should there be any questions that we cannot address immediately, we would then follow up with you bilaterally. So, without further delay, um, let me start introducing uh, the tool and the information Metas project to give you a brief uh, context of, um, of the tool and how it was developed. So the, the tool has been developed as part and in the context of the Information Matters project. The Information Matters project is a project that builds up and strengthens in-country capacities for domestic MIV systems to enable countries to report mitigation and inventories in their BORs and national communications. So that is the main focus of the information project. It's about building up MIV systems and enable the reporting in BORs, which is a relatively, well, not now, not so new requirement anymore, but compared to the past when parties only had to report national communications. We started working in four countries, namely in Chile, the Dominican Republic, Ghana, and the Philippines during a first phase of the project. And now since 2016, we have on board four more countries, namely Colombia, Egypt, Georgia, and Vietnam. Um, and one of the key features of the information project is that it provides tailor-made in-country capacity building training and workshops. It facilitates the peer-to-peer -peer exchange among countries. And as one additional element is the development of knowledge products and tools. And this is what we will focus here in our webinar. So I will now go directly to the BUR process guidance tool that um, um, that was one of the main products developed under the project. And the advantage is that due to the experience we had working with four countries during the first phase, we gained a number of experience from countries on what they need to develop their first BUR and prepare a, a good inventory and undergo the ICA process. So all this information um, is compiled and has fed into the uh, development of the guidance tool. The main purpose is, so why we developed this, was to help countries in the planning process for the BUR, uh, for developing the content, and then to also plan and have the necessary capacities in place to undergo the ICA process, the International Consultation and Analysis process, which is also relatively new for non-annex one parties. Um, as a user group, we have defined mainly countries that are in this process for the first time. Um, in other words, those that are doing the BUR for the first time and also undergoing the ICA for the first time. But nevertheless, since preparation of the BUR and the development of MIV systems is a continuous process. We think that it can also have important elements also for parties that are more advanced because they could focus on specific aspects of the tool. So it can be used at any stage, basically. Um, I'm also happy to let you know that even though at the moment we have it available only in English, uh, we have translations in Spanish and French upcoming very soon. Um, so let me briefly also say you present to you some other knowledge products and tools that we developed as part of Information Matters because all of them will be referenced during the BUR process guidance tool. The, the BUR process guidance tool is sort of the, um, the, the red line that guides you through the whole process and refers to relevant materials, guidelines, and documents. And some of them are some other knowledge products that we developed, like for example, a stock-taking tool that helps countries 
to get an overview of its uh, MRV and mitigation architecture. Then we developed a template that helps countries to develop the content of the BUR in the various chapter. Uh, we developed a guidance document that assists countries to see what they would need to have in place in order to be well prepared to undergo the ICA process. And also we developed a good practice study for greenhouse gas inventories in the waste sector since this is a sector where we uh, saw that there are still um, many difficulties uh, by non-annex one countries in getting good estimates in this sector for the greenhouse gas inventory. And as you can see, many of them are also available in Spanish and French. Uh, so with this, I finish my brief introduction about the information matters and the tool. And uh, before handing over to the next presentation, here you can see all the members of the Information Matters project. All of them have been developed in the, have been involved in the development of the tool. Um, so you can contact them uh, anytime, any of us. So I now have the pleasure to hand over to Jill Wilkins and John Watterson from Ricardo Energy and Environment, who were our partners during the first phase of the information project, Information Matters project, and who designed with us the tool. And they will now guide you step by step through the tool in more depth. And um, yes, I'm very happy to hand over to you, Jill and John. Thank you very much. Okay, good, good morning all um, and uh, a very warm welcome um, from myself and from, from Jill. Do you want to just say good morning, Jill? Good morning, uh, everybody. Okay. Good to have you on the line. Um, thank you uh, to um, the host for uh, a great introduction and what we're now going to do is uh, to run through um, the BUR process uh, guidance notes and uh, it'll take about 25 to 30 minutes um, and I'm just going to step through the uh, instructions and the process. If you have questions, please do um, put those uh, down through the question facility and we'll do our best to answer them all uh, as we're going along. Okay, so we said a warm welcome, and again, a very warm welcome. We're stepping through the BUR process guidance tool, and the first point to make is the tool is extremely simple, and it's designed, uh, been designed based on the experience that we have gained as a team working with GIZ, uh, working with a number of countries during the Information Matters Phase 1. So it's a tool designed uh, for, for countries and to help them uh, in their BUR process and to prepare for the ICA process. Um, we have an apology from Sina who wasn't able to join, but myself uh, and Jill are here. And so we will be stepping you through the tool and helping you answer questions. So let's just have a look at what we're going to cover in the webinar. Um, the why the tool is needed, I think <coughs> GIZ have uh, covered that reasonably well, but I'll be stepping through the basic principles uh, of the tools and critically, how do you use the tool? Um, the tool is going to be certainly current until at least 2020, and so uh, have no fear if you learn how to use it that it will become outdated because that's not the case. It will be certainly current for the next uh, two to three years. So let's just have a look at why the tool was needed. Um, and the first point is that it's designed for countries that haven't done a BIRB before and who are early in the BIRB process. But it's not only for those countries, it's also for countries who want a BIRB refresher. And we appreciate that um, you do this periodically 
and you may forget perhaps some of the detail that is required. So if that's the case, then you can turn to this tool for help. It will help you preparing a BUR and it will also guide you um, through some of the initial steps to help you prepare for the international consultation and analysis. Ideally, you should have a basic understanding of the BIRD process and also of MRV before you use the tool. But if you don't, the tool also has excellent guidance on where you can find out about this process and it refers to a number of other excellent GIZ publications which can assist. At the beginning of the tool, there is a short introduction to the BUR, MRV and ICA processes and there's a very good uh, reference table which presents and summarizes these topics in more detail. So let's just have a look at some of the basic principles. And there are six main steps. It is a cyclical process because the BIR occurs finally or every two years. And step six, six feeds back to, to step one. For each step, the tool provides information on the relevance of the step and the main things that you need to do um, as part of the step. It also explains the relevant issues that you need to consider before implementing the step and critically it helps you estimate the time required for completing each step. Now we need to just point out that these times are indicative only and they're quite approximate and you may indeed do it much more quickly than the estimates of the tool. So let's look at the six steps. Step one coordination team, step two, taking stock, step three, the actual BIR and MRV planning process, step four, BIR compilation, MRV setup, step five, ICA preparation, and step six, making improvements all the time, and then back to step one. As you go through the tool, look out for um, good practice points, and these are highlighted box, and also lessons which we have learned um, as a team delivering from the Information Matters Phase 1 project. And you can find these, there's a, an example there on the right, highlighted on the page. The good practice points are in the blue box and the lessons learned uh, are, are in the orange box. There's also cross-references to other excellent GIZ tools and guidance that's available on the web. And here's an example taken from Table 1. Um, and it provides references to uh, UN reporting obligations and also to uh, the MRV GIZ toolkit. At the end of each section, at each step, I beg your pardon, you'll also find a list of sources and information which can help you. So let's now look at defining your national circumstances. This is in fact a pre-step before you, you go through the main parts of the tool and this is um, very important. So if we just uh, look at the um, questions themselves, uh, let's uh, now look at the, 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 the particular questions um, and they relate to have you compiled a bird before, do you have resources, is there a strong political buy-in? Uh, do you have an, a GHG inventory system? Do you have a, uh, a system including the processes for looking at mitigation? And um, do you have any mechanism for tracking support? The questions uh, are, are quite simple. There's a drop-down box and there's an example on this presentation that shows you that. You click, select the appropriate um, answer, and then there's a button at the bottom called Transfer Answers. So, there's just seven questions. In summary, um, this helps the tool define how long it will take you based on your national circumstances. Oh, beg your pardon, gone a little bit too quick there. And it sets the scene uh, for the next steps. So let's step through at step one, getting started, looking at the BIRD coordination team. Three questions here. Do, do you have a team? Um, if you do, do they meet regularly? And 
do the team have good knowledge of the Burr requirements? And you can see that we've put an example here that shows the answers uh, that we've selected for a country that would just be starting out on the Burr process. So for example here, um, Burr coordination team, designation ongoing, uh, when did they meet? Not applicable because they haven't yet met. And does the existing or uh, future coordination team have the knowledge? Only partly. I'm not going to go through all of the questions and answers in each step because we don't have time, but I wanted to just explain the principle on this slide. Notice that there's a button that says estimate time now. Once you've put your answers in, you push the button and then below uh, the estimates of the time will appear. And in this case, the tool based on our experience suggests that the duration for this step is between two and three months. Remember, if um, in many cases you might be able to do this much more quickly. So if you find a long time estimate, don't let that worry you. There are quite a lot of bullets on this slide. Those are, in fact, on all of the slides, and those are done deliberately. I won't talk through all of them, but they're there as an important reference, and I believe that this presentation will be available on the web as a resource, and so I wanted to make sure that um, there was sufficient uh, documentation to uh, illuminate the process. One point that I want to just leave on for this step, it's extremely important to get buy-in uh, for the Burr compilation from stakeholders and, and importantly senior politicians. Without that, it can be much more difficult to actually deliver a Burr and implement an MRV system. So let's now step on to point two, taking stock, identifying the MRV structures, processes and capacities in your country. Again, we've answered the questions here, assuming that a country is just starting out on the Burr process. So have you taken stock? And the answer here we've selected is partly. Are there information channels between ministries and relevant data provider institutions? Only for some. Estimating the time um, is going to take around one and a half to two and a half months to, to set these procedures and processes up properly. And let's look in more detail at the step. Well, it's going to help you understand the structures, capacities and processes that you have um, and where there may be gaps and work to be done. The important thing is it will help identify gaps and with that gap you can then um, have a capacity development or a gap filling program to help you fill those gaps and be ready then to move on to the next step of creating your Burr and MRV system. So let's move on to the next step, which is step three, making a plan for the Burr compilation and the system set up. So again, we've answered the questions as though a country is just starting on its Burr journey. <clears throat> and you can see here, step three is a little more complex than the other steps, and there's a matrix. The questions, um, there are four, status of overarching MRV system, status of national GHG inventory, tracking mitigation actions, and tracking support. And then on the other dimension, we're looking at the arrangements for those particular um, questions, the capacities, and also the processes. So here, you need to spend a little bit more time thinking about how, how to answer this question. And again, um, the estimate time button there is below the table, push that, and here, we're estimating that this country will need between about two and three months to, to, to go through all the work necessary. Okay, let's move on to step four, which is making the plan. This is a particularly important point. So it's about implementation and it's about complementation of the Burr and setup of your MRV system. So two simple questions here really. How many staff members will be able to work on the Burr compilation? And is there a plan for quality assurance and quality control? Here we've assumed that we've got three staff members and that there is no QA, QC um, system in place. Having around three people in our experience, it's, it's not unusual. Um, you may be lucky and have more. Some countries may only have one or two people. 
if you had just three people and you didn't have a QA process uh, in place, um, and I've actually clipped off, I beg your pardon, the amount of time, but it would take a few months really to get the implementation uh, in, in, in place. So, if we just think and pause here for a minute and think about the MRV system, because we've talked a lot about BURs, but what about the MRV system that accompanies them? Well, there are three dimensions. There are legal, procedural, and institutional elements. And if you consider all of the work that's needed in those dimensions, you will be able to identify gaps and put plans into place to make sure that you have sufficient capacity and capability uh, to do the work and to consider um, the inventory, mitigation, and MRV of support. Let's move on to step five. And again, this is an important step, getting ready to learn from others. And this is about preparing for the ICA process. Now, many people do worry about the ICA process, but there is no need to do that. It isn't an exam, a test. It is a facilitative sharing of views where people can ask questions, you can ask questions as a country, and you can gain experience, knowledge, and confidence through the process. So for those people who are listening at the moment who are concerned, please don't be. In this case, the questions are quite simple. Have you undergone an ICA process? In this case, we've selected no. And does the team have any experience of inventory reviews, uh, technical reviews of perhaps of inventories or, or non-Annex 1, uh, national communications perhaps, or other BURs? And in this case, we've also answered no. So in this case, little experience in this example country, and therefore it's going to take uh, two to three months for them to, to gain sufficient experience. As I said before, the primary aim of the ICA is to increase transparency of, of mitigation and the actions, and it helps parties get feedback from international experts. And in the end, it becomes a virtuous circle where that feedback goes on to improve the whole process. So now, at the end of the process, it's time to consider how to apply lessons learned and to have an improvement plan. This is very important. Um, although it's a, a biannual process, there are likely to be times when not much work occurs. But it's important during those times to think about work that could go on to prepare for the next burr and how that could be better than the burr that was done before. So let's just look at these questions again. Two simple ones. Do you have an improvement plan in the burr and do you have an improvement plan in the MRV system? For both of these, the answer is no. And so the tool thinks it's going to take between one and perhaps two months um, to, to create these. I think this is one of the most important things to do and one of the things that gets forgotten the most is this improvement plan. It's so often the case that, that countries will work very hard and diligently to do the BUR and then work will stop shortly until the next BUR is, is due. But if you have a clear documented plan of things that need to be done, things that went well and did not, this will help enormously, especially if the team composition changes um, from the time that you submitted the first BUR to the time that you submitted the next. At the end of the tool, once you've put all the information in, you've defined your national circumstances and you've gone through the six steps, it then provides a summary of, of time um, for each of the step and an overall estimate of the total time. There's a button there that says provide summary. You need to push that once you've gone through the tool and it transfers all the information into this handy overview table. Now, it might look a bit worrying that the estimate is actually more than two years when the cycle of the BUR is two years, but it could be a lot less than that. And for those countries listening in who have done a BUR, you will probably get an answer from the tool in a matter of just months because you already have capacity systems and capabilities in place. So for you, it's more of a refresher rather than a, um, a complete blank starting point. 
So these final estimations should help you with planning, resourcing, and perhaps um, developing cases for funding or persuading uh, senior pol uh, political um, people that you do need resource and time for this important reporting obligation. As the MRV system uh, becomes more established in your country and as you do more births, the time needed will quite rapidly drop. So we have actually come to the end of our presentation. I want to thank you very much for your attention. Just let me remind you that there is, there is an opportunity for, for questions and we're very happy to, to deal with those. So, um, I think, let me just confirm with the organisers, do you want me to put the slide on the screen uh, that introduces the question and answer session, or do you want me to turn, <laughs> aha, no, I think that's not the case, we could be going to Georgia, but I'll just hand over to, to the organisers to confirm the next step, thanks. Um, th thank you very much, John, for walking us through the tool and, and uh, in much depth and detail. I'm sure that many of the participants now have a better understanding what the tool is about and how they might be able to use it in the national context. Um, so, but before taking then the questions, um, I would like to hand over now to Ms. Maya Charavaratka from Georgia. Uh, because she's going to share with us um, her experiences from a country perspective on the application of the tool. And uh, let me also say that Georgia is one of the countries being supported as part of the Information Matters project. They joined for the second phase and are quite experienced on this matter as they have just recently submitted their first BUR and will be soon undergoing the ICA process. So I am now pleased to hand over to, to Ms. Maya. Uh, Maya, you have the floor now. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Maya. I, am, uh, I represent uh, the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources Protection of Georgia. Uh, so my presentation will be about the Georgia's experience on the PUR uh, process guiding tool. Uh, I hope the presentation is, uh, I mean, you can everybody see my presentation. Uh, yes. Uh, I will start just now. In a second. Uh, okay. Uh, so very briefly, uh, I'll introduce about the Georgia because maybe probably uh, uh, there are participants who don't know about the country. Uh, it's located in the Caucasus region, bordering Turkey and Russia uh, mainly, and also Black Sea, uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan. Population is very small, kind of 3.5 million. Uh, Georgia associated with the UN trip the process in 1994, uh, then in 1999 Kyoto Protocol, uh, Copenhagen Accord in 2011, and in December 2015 by communicating our NDC to the uh, UNFCCC Secretary, we also joined the Paris Agreement. Uh, currently, uh, uh, we communicated, uh, so we finished uh, our uh, biannual update report. Uh, and communicated this document uh, in July 2016, uh, which uh, consolidates the national circumstances and inventory of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, brief overview and proposed MRV, current uh, country's progress with the mitigation actions and constraints, gaps, and related financial, technical, and capacity needs, and mainly it uh, builds on the findings and recommendations from the third national communication. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, we already finished uh, the document of the biannual update report, though we are in the process and we're in the middle process of, uh, uh, of uh, in general. Currently, we are, uh, uh, so uh, the linkages about the country experience and about this tool are that uh, we joined uh, the tool uh, a bit late uh, in the fifth, fifth step where we are now. Uh, addition, we also tested the time cal calculation that was provided, uh, um, that is provided in the tool to compare 
to compare if the time was in uh, in line with the I mean the calculation was in line with the real time, uh, and indeed uh, indeed it calculated quite an uh, exact time. Uh, so uh, very briefly, I will uh, highlight the main um, uh, the main uh, uh, steps where we had kind of gaps uh, and where we addressed it. So with the first one. Uh, the appointing uh, PUR coordinating team. Uh, in our case, uh, of course, it was the first PUR before we had uh, the National Co Communication Coordination Team, but uh, the system and team changed a lot. Uh, therefore, we uh, kind of lost quite a couple of months to completing the new team and the system for the implementation. Also here, uh, estimated time was exactly calculated. Uh, so what, from our experience, um, uh, what I can share to you is that uh, it's very important uh, that recommendation uh, that was also provided within the tool that uh, close connection of the UR coordination team to senior government levels uh, will really increase the likelihood of securing resources for the UR as well as collaboration with uh, other institutions. Um, also regarding the step three, uh, making plan uh, for the viewer completion and MRV system setup. Uh, tool also highlights, uh, and it's very important to set up the proper uh, MRV system. As uh, without MRV system, uh, of course, it can be done uh, the viewer without proper setup of MRV system. But uh, it is likely that uh, the completion of every national communications or uh, biannual update reports would have to start from scratch every time, uh, which will will be much less cost effective and deliver uh, low quality reports. And it's really true in principle we compile our viewer without setting up a domestic MRV system. Uh, though what we did was that um, within the project we developed recommendations for establishing domestic MRV uh, for NAMAS. Uh, currently uh, we have used the tool and according to its results we developed proper schedule for recommendations in order to uh, formalize uh, the institutional structures of the MRV system. Uh, as I mentioned, we are in step five um, in ICA preparation process. Uh, so uh, from the beginning, it was like first experience for us. Also, we were a bit uh, confused about the ICA in general, and we tried to mobilize all BUR team for responding to the questions. Uh, as you might know, uh, the primary aim of the ICA is to increase the transparency of the mitigation actions and their effects. Uh, in addition, it allows partner uh, parties to get feedback from international experts on the BUR. But um, in general, while we went through this tool, also we had the training from the from JZ team about the ICA process. We found out that uh, process is the really more opportunity rather than challenge. And I encourage you to also take it. Uh, as this and to try to get much input as uh, and to try to use it for your own interest and for future BUR development. Uh, there is no need to involve full team of uh, BUR within the process. Uh, it's kind of recommended to have like four, uh, three, four uh, persons in the group. And as for the steps uh, six, uh, applying lessons learned and improvements over time. Uh, for this step, uh, recommendations from the tool helped us to start uh, planning process. Uh, uh, so far, we have uh, collected many lessons learned and I did identified potential for improvements. Uh, currently, as it was recommended in the tool, we are working to merge reports for lessons learned and improvement plans within the uh, one document. And also, we will have some more during the UR verification process. Uh, sorry. Uh, I will, for the next uh, slide, I'd like to conclude it. Uh, about the tool. The tool works properly when entering all the information. Uh, estimation of the calculated time periods also works properly. Uh, it's, uh, the tool really captures all key steps and activities necessary for the process. It is really very user-friendly. Uh, it's very easy to read and the text is very clear and easy to understand. So uh, this is uh, all. Thank you for listening. I try to be as brief as possible.
Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Maya, for sharing your, your experience on the BUR preparation and how the tool has helped you on, on, on certain stages with that. I think this kind of feedback is uh, extremely valuable for us because the tool is meant to be for the country, so it should be something useful that assists you in your daily work. So we are very, very grateful for this kind of feedback as this will help us to further improve and develop the tool in the future. Um, so with that, I think we have uh, reached the end of the presentation and we should have sufficient material for thoughts now and follow up. And um, I will be happy to invite you now for the question and answer session. Uh, we received already some of them. Um, as we said, should we not be able to address them all right now? We will take them up bilaterally with you. Um, so, I would like to, Jill, are you there? To hand yes, over to Jill for the question and answers. Um, you can read them out. Yeah, so we're just putting, John, John will just put up a slide. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, thank you very much um, for the questions that have been submitted so far. Please, um, if you have any questions, please type them into the questions box on the webinar tool panel. Uh, we have a couple of questions already. We have one which is a very good question here about that. how experienced or knowledgeable do you need to be uh, with regard to BER and ICA process in order to be able to successfully apply the tool and use it as part of the planning process of a country? And that's a very good question. Um, at, at the beginning of the, the, the tool itself, it provides lots of information, so really, um, I mean, it's very helpful if you know a bit about the Bowen ICA process, but if you don't know anything at all, um, then there are all the links um, and um, uh, uh, information that you need. Uh, it's not all embedded in the tool, but it provides you links where you can go and find out about the, the Bowen ICA process. So it sets out um, all the UNFCCC guidance and other useful guidance documents that have been written um, on the subject. So, you know, it's a complete beginner could pick this up and, and work their way through it. It would take some time to go and look at all the documents, but it's all there for you to go and find out. So that's a very good question. Thank you for that. Um, so we have a question uh, on the sort of functionality of the tool and what sort of software it's using. It says, is this tool a software tool? So John, perhaps you'd like to, to answer that. Jill, thank you. So the question, is this tool a software tool? The answer is not really. It um, is a tool that's been built in Word, the, the Microsoft package Word. It uses some Visual Basic um, components, but it isn't a bespoke piece of software. So if you have a fairly modern version of Microsoft Word, it, it will work. Okay, thanks. Thank you, John. We're also getting a, a few questions about how to access the tool and do you need to subscribe to be able to access the tool. This is a completely free tool, you, you don't need to subscribe to it and it's available um, on for download on the um, International Partnership on MRV website. The, the slide that um, Rothio put up in the beginning of this presentation, and I think it's also on the question and answer slide, which I can't see at the moment. Um, there's a web link at the bottom there where you can click on that and you can freely um, download the tool. As you say, it's a, it's a Word document with um, macros built into it, so it's, it's very easy for you to access. Uh, there's a question here more related to um, the sort of uh, political architecture um, of um, the Burr process and we have a question on who makes up the technical team of experts. So John, are you 
wanting to answer that one? Or does Rocio want to answer that one? I, I, don't, I can attempt this, but Rocio, if you, if you want to provide your thoughts, I don't mind. Okay. I'll attempt this. The technical team. Yes, yes. I may. I may. I may. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> uh, yes, I can add to to the answer. But yeah, please feel free to start. Sorry, I managed to just push put put up my hand there. So ignore that. I'll put my hand down again. Right. The technical team of experts exists under uh, one of the the UN groups called the Consultative Groups of Experts under the Framework Convention on Climate Change. Um, it consists of people who are suitably qualified to technically review BERS. There are exams that these reviewers have to take um, and they are nominated, my understanding, they need to be nominated um, by uh, um, countries and they also, the people who are on the TTE need to be on something called the roster of experts. And again, a country has to nominate a person to, to, to be on that roster. Um, so they are qualified to do the, the exam and typically they're people who either have worked on greenhouse gas inventories, mitigation actions, who are familiar with national communications, have written and coordinated them. Something uh, something like that. I don't know, Rosia, do you want to add further clarifications? Thank you. Yeah, okay, I'm happy to do that. Um, yes, yeah, so um, the team of technical experts, actually they are very quite strict procedures by the UNFCCC and, and a decision that defines how this team is being composed. And it's composed by expert of uh, a few Annex 1 parties, and but most parties from non-Annex 1 parties and they are um, there, there should have regional distribution from, from all the regions. And um, as was explained, they have to be nominated by the UNFCCC national focal point of a country to the roster of expert. And then after having gone through certain proceedings and examinations, they will qualify to be a reviewer or a member of a team of technical experts. And then they will be uh, able to to do the technical analysis of uh, other countries' BUR. But it, what is very interesting that very often it's, um, it could be your peers, it could be anyone from your neighboring country who is an inventory expert who will be doing the technical analysis um, of, an, of another country and it's, it's a very good opportunity to be on these teams also to, to learn more how other countries are doing the BURs, what challenges they are facing and how they are overcoming. Um, yes, but what's important to know that there are very uh, clear procedures for people to be on those teams. Thank you. Thank you, Rothia. Just looking at some more questions here, we have a, a question on um, how to get from uh, how to get to a, a functional BER team from existing team working on national communications. And this is a very good point, I think. Um, in many countries, there are already um, systems, processes, procedures, and teams in place doing various functions, either, either national reporting or international reporting uh, related to, to climate change. Um, and one of the things that uh, we found that was very important in the Information Matters project was to build on the institutions and functions and processes and procedures that are already in place. So if there is already a national communication team uh, in place in a country, the best thing is to build on the capacity and, and what they're already doing and to um, look at what needs to be done in addition in order to produce the BUR. So for example, um, a BUR includes information on um, support received or um, activities that um, are monitoring the impact maybe of uh, mitigation actions as well. So. Um, these elements may need to be added and you may need to identify other teams to bring into the the whole MRV system that will help you deliver your your BUR. So I think that's a very good question um, and from the experience of Information Matters it's a very important question and, and one where 
um, building on what you have is, is the best way to go because people are familiar with the processes and procedures and you enhance the teams that are already in place. So let's having having a look at some more questions here. Um, I think one of the questions um, is related to the methodology behind estimating the time frames in this tool. Um, I don't know if John wants to say something on that, but certainly one of the, the important things to note about this tool is that the activities that are identified and the steps that are identified um, don't have to all happen sequentially. Some of them can happen in parallel. So when estimating the times, we've tried to take into account that some of these things can happen in parallel. Um, and so, as we mentioned at the beginning, the time frames are, are kind of estimated ranges of time, and it really depends um, on what you've got in place already as to how quickly you can do things. And certainly, the second time round, things will be a lot quicker. I don't know if John would like to add anything more to that. The thank you, Jill. The the times, the estimates of the times in the tool are essentially, in most cases, expert judgment, but they're calibrated against what countries, uh, a number of countries, have experienced. So there's no very complex mathematical formula behind there. There is some maths, it, it's true to say there is, but in many cases it's our expert um, experience and it calibrated against the time that countries have actually taken. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, another question I have here is, how much time will it take approximately to fill out the whole tool? Um, again, this is, is a very good question. Um, it, it depends um, on your level of knowledge um, about the BIRD process, because if you have very uh, little knowledge at the beginning and you want to go away and read all the information related to the links that are embedded at the front end of this tool, it will take you some time to get up to speed on the, the BIRD process. Um, but once, you know, if you enter the tool uh, knowing a little bit about the process and your confidence to just read through the tool and answer the questions, you should be able to do that within an hour. Um, it's or one to two hours. It's really um, very simple. It's not meant to um, bog you down. It's a, a smooth process and a, a streamlined process to go through the tool. And um, really, if you want to go off and look at links and, and uh, maybe access the other tools, for example, if, if you get to the um, step two, which is about stock taking, and you want to go off and look at the stock taking tool, you can go off and explore that, um, and then come back to this uh, guidance document. But to actually fill it in, one, one to two hours, I'd say, would be a reasonable estimate. Um, but it'd be quite useful to, to maybe hear from Georgia how long it took you. If you're actually going through the process, it's taking you some time. But just to read through it and answer the, answer the questions, maybe I can hand over to Georgia to, to tell us how long it actually took you. Uh, yes, uh, hello again. Uh, actually, uh, as far as tool is very simple uh, to fill in and even to read, uh, it uh, takes about hour and a half, maximum two hours maybe to, to go through the process, even if you are not very much familiar of, to, of the UR process. To process. I mean, it's very, really very easy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's reassuring to know. <laughs> that when you actually uh, use it, it does take that time. So thank you for that. Um, I have just checking on other questions here. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it, this tool, uh, there's a question here about um, uh, Mac. Uh, the, the tool won't, won't uh, operate on an Apple Mac. Um, no, no. No, not tested or verified to, to uh, we assume it won't work. Um, and you need to have a re relatively up-to-date version of Word as well. And um, yeah, there's some specifications in the tool, I think, that, that say that. There are other questions here. Um, let's have a quick look. 
how the tool can help improve the quality and the transparency of the burr if you use it as a burr refresher that's a very good question I think that would be helping focus on the, the sort of the step six on looking through how to improve things so perhaps I could hand over to John to just say a few words about how you could use the tool to help improve the quality and transparency of a burr if you're using it in a refresher context Jill thank you I think there are two um, two points I'd like to make the first as you point out step six which is the step that encourages you to, to document your experience and create some kind of improvement plan is a critical one and through that by implementing that the next burr should be more transparent and of a higher quality than the first burr. The second is the tool makes uh, a lot of cross references to some very useful background material on quality um, written by the IPCC and, and the UN and that background reading is, is extremely useful and will help with certain aspects of, of quality, particularly on the greenhouse gas inventory. Thank you. Thank you, John. I, I'm conscious of the time um, and it's nearly, oh, it's just turned on the hour. So I'm thinking I should perhaps hand back to Rothio um, to conclude the webinar. Thank you very much for all your questions, everybody. And I say if there are any we yeah. haven't answered. Yeah, I am just checking on the question. We just received an additional one, but I think we can take that very quickly because it's about is the tool for only non-annex one parties. I my answer will be yes, because BURs um, is a requirement for non-annex one parties. For annex one parties, they have other reporting requirements more extensive and they have also own tools and formats that they would use. Um, nevertheless, there could be useful elements also useful for, a non -un uh, for an Annex one parties. But in principle, the answer is that yes, the BUR process guidance tool has been developed uh, specifically for the BURs and so for the non-Annex one parties. Okay, I think there are no more questions here, so we are just about in time to finalize. Uh, so let me conclude now. I wish to thank you all for your active participation, contributions and questions. I hope you found the tool and the webinar uh, useful and uh, please feel free to download it from the website that we have displayed here once again on the final slide and to contact any of us if, if you have questions either on the Information Matters project or on the tool itself. You have all the contacts there from our team and from the Ricardo Energy and Environment team. Um, yeah, I wish to thank especially our speakers um, from Georgia to Ms. Maya and also from Ricardo Energy and Environment to, to Jill, John, uh, Jill Wilkins, John Watterson and also Sina Wortman who was not here with us but um, for the excellent work and cooperation in the development of the tool. And um, yeah, I wish you every success in your reporting efforts and preparation of your boards, of your BORs. And finally, I would also thank my own Information Matters team here in Germany and for the technical support that we received for conducting uh, this webinar. Uh, yes, well, with this, I wish you all a very good day. Thank you very much. and. Yeah, bye-bye. The webinar is adjourned.